Hello, so uh, I'm going to apologize in advance because there's probably going to be um, Katie Dids chirping in the back all, uh, all video and also you'll probably be hearing all sorts of other creatures of the night. Um, welcome to North Carolina Summers. Um, today's, uh, today's review is of Repo Man. Um, which is the 1984 Alex Cox uh, director debut, I think. Um, sort of a dystopian science fiction-ish um, punk rock influenced um, culty type movie. Um, uh, it stars Emilio Estevez, uh, Harry or Harry Dean or Henry Dean Stanton plays a uh, um, plays a key character as well. Um, so there's you know there's a fairly decent cast in there for it being such kind of a, a low budget movie. It is very low budget. Um, yeah, you can tell the source material was definitely difficult for Criterion to work with, not in the sense that it was grainy or anything, but just because it was probably cheap materials, um, but nevertheless, Criterion did a good job with the transfer, the Blu-ray looked really good, um, the soundtrack is, is a bunch of punk rock, which is, is very lo-fi, uh, music, but it comes through clear, um, the, uh, the basic premise of the plot is Emilio Estevez, uh, plays this young kid who's, uh, who kind of gets pulled into a repo, uh, repossession, um, man, gang, uh, not like a crime gang, but just sort of a group of, of repo men in Los Angeles. Uh, and one car, uh, Chevy Malibu, comes on the market, and uh, I think it's $20,000 that it's going for, and so everybody wants a piece of it, including rival repo men. Um, and the Chevy Malibu is uh, this extraterrestrial car or something, and, you know, there's sense it's kind of alien, um, that it might be a UFO or something, um, there's like a neutron bomb in the trunk that kind of zaps people, um, every time they go to look at it, and Dennis Hopper plays this strange character, uh, that drives the car around, um, there's this audio cue every time the um, car is coming around this little, like, I don't know how to describe it, but just kind of like a warbling sound. Um, yeah, I think that's about it as far as story is concerned, is what you would need to know, but a lot of the, a lot of the fun takes place in that campy sort of science fiction stuff, meshing with the... DIY, not give a fuck kind of stuff with punk, and then it all kind of rounding out in the comedic, more comedic moments of the movie. It's not a comedy, but it, it does, it's sort of darkly humorous, um, kind of in the sense that, uh, something like The Beals of Great Gardens, or even Harold and Maude, but Harold and Maude is definitely more of a comedy, um, or I'm just struggling to think of a good you know, maybe Doctor Strange Love, but even that's too intentionally comedy, comedic. Um, it just has funny moments. Uh, the soundtrack, again, is really cool. Um, it's got, you know, bands from Iggy Pop wrote the theme, or performs the theme. Um, the Circle Jerks, you know, Keith Morris's of, of Black Flag, and, and I think Suicidal Tendencies, Keith Morris's old, um, one of his old bands. Uh, so there's, you know, there's a whole bunch of really cool stuff in here, and there's even some um, Spanish language kind of punk rock from The Plugs, who I'd never heard of, but um, they do a cover of Secret Agent Man, for example. Um, so I don't know, it's just a really kind of fun, fun soundtrack, especially if you're remotely interested in punk rock. Uh, you know, classic sort of 80s, late 70s type punk rock. Um, yeah, Emilio Estevez's character, I mean, he's, Emilio Estevez is so young in this movie, um, and he delivers a pretty solid performance. Apparently, uh, as revealed in the special features, um, Dick Rude, who plays Duke in the movie, um, 
was supposed to be that lead ro lead role for a while. That was that was the plan for a year or so as this movie was being in sort of pre-production. But kind of at the eleventh hour, um, Emilio Estevez came in and, and read for the role somehow and got it, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, uh, yeah, as far as extra features go, there's um, there's a commentary track with the director and some other producers that I haven't watched yet. I might watch it tonight. Um, my internet is currently down, so I don't have a whole lot to do um, except clean. <laughs> And so I, I might watch that, um, but there's also a television version, which is cleaned up with the profanity, and apparently some scene, new scenes were interjected and uh, or injected, or whatever, into the narrative, and the drug use was cut out. I mean, I have no idea what what that's all about, but I'd be interested to check that out too. But again, that's you know. That's the original film, the television version, and the commentary track. It's, you know, it's three, basically, versions of the movie right there. Um, as far as special features go, uh, there's um, there's a com uh, conversation with Iggy Pop. Um, there's one with Stanton, Henry, Harry, Harry Dean, Henry Dean Stanton. Um, what else is there that's worth talking about? There's an interview, uh, sort of round table with the, um, I think, I think it's the two producers and the director, uh, but that was really fun to hear them talk about that. You know, apparently there was multiple other endings and, you know, the studios were like, you can't put that, you can't have that be the movie. Um, they talked a lot about how they tried to get the film made originally and just you know it, it's really cool stuff if you like to know how um, you know for me I'm always interested in how the movie got made like you know how it got funded or stuff like that uh, as well as the, the sort of physical how it was done like if there's a cool special effect um, or, or a certain shot um, just hearing about that kind of stuff or, or even you know something that you think is like oh well, that's really that was a really good uh, really good shot and then you you see later that they just decided it on the fly. They changed their um, original plan or something like that. So um, that's cool. Uh, what else is there? Um, I, I rented this from a video store, so I don't have any of the, um, the essays. Um, deleted scenes. Um, Oh, and then also on the Iggy Pop uh, interview, there's also Keith Morris has interviewed um, Dick Rude and a couple of other um, of, the, of the stars of the film who are kind of in the punk scene. So, um, all in all, a pretty pretty well featured set, and I've seen the artwork from um, you know various sources, and it looks really cool. The, the packaging artwork, um, the the movie itself, again, the look and everything is, is just fantastic. Um, I don't think this is the greatest movie ever made, but it's just really fun. Um, I would recommend definitely checking it out. I, I rented it for a couple bucks and uh, really enjoyed it. Um, it's not on the Hizzy channel, but you know, if you if you can get get it this way, sort of renting or, or something of that sort, I would recommend definitely doing it. Um, if you're interested in punk music or punk ethos or attitude or any of that stuff, or uh, if you like kind of, you know, campy-ish science fiction, sort of like Mad Max or The Road Warrior, where it's not the most polished or refined film, but it, it does what it does really fucking well, then you would like this. Uh, it, it's just good. Check it out. Um, blind by if you think you would be interested in the movie. If you don't, don't blind by it, because um, it seems, I, I don't know, I am interested in a lot of the, the sort of parts that, you know, um, it is the sum of its parts, and therefore I liked it, um, but, I don't know, check it out, uh, definitely recommend it, um, if, even if you're not interested in those things, maybe step out of your comfort zone, it's just fun, um, you can't 
you can't dislike a movie that, that doesn't take itself too seriously and, and pulls it off. So, um, that's about that's about the most I can say for this this release. Definitely check it out. I'll probably be buying it um, after I upgrade everything I own to Blu-ray. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.